Our word for today is women. Like they say in the ads, they've come a long, long way. It used to be that women were seen and not heard very much. Come to think of it, they weren't seen much either. They were passengers mostly, seldom drivers, and rarely buyers of automobiles. But after women got the vote, they also got the idea that they could make some decisions for themselves. They decided to assert some independence. Some even went to work. Most, however, continued to fulfill the traditional roles of wife and mother. World War II changed a lot of things. By the time it ended, women had become far more independent. Families started moving to the suburbs. Girls entered college in larger numbers and left them to pursue marriage for the most part. It was the beginning of the baby boom, and the second car became a reality. In the 50s and 60s, the lid came off. Women felt more confident. They were better educated. They began to make more money as more jobs opened for them. Some even began to question their traditional status. They became alert consumers and started to influence major buying decisions, such as the purchase of a new car. Some even bought their own. Here we are in the 70s, and who knows where it's going to end. Women are asserting themselves as never before, not just the bra burners, but the smart, sharp, affluent society of women has done a full 180. They know where their place is, all right. Right next to us, as equals. God bless them. It's time we recognize them for what they are, new car prospects. You know, it's true. Social scientists say that the differences between men and women are disappearing. There's a gradual blurring of the sexes with more emphasis on individuality. Just take a look around you. Today, except for obvious physical differences, there are more similarities than dissimilarities. Our attitudes and tastes and interests seem to be merging. Women have new roles, more freedom, more mobility. They participate more in male activities, such as sports and clubs. They're wearing more masculine clothes, less frills. They go for the natural look in cosmetics. Men, too, have new roles these days. We're more conscious of our self-image today, and we express ourselves through our clothes, hairstyles, body fragrances, choice of colors, and many other ways. Today, men and women both are interested in such automotive factors as exterior design and color, interior appointments, fabric texture, color, and design. Did you ever think you'd see the day when men could get excited about crushed velours for their cars? In red? Now, with more women working, the trend toward multiple cars, the increase in ownership and use of cars by women, they have a lot more to say about what's bought. That no longer applies just to the interior and color. It's true of the size, make, model, options, and accessories, as well as the actual decision to buy. OK. As a salesman, you have every right to ask what Chrysler Corporation is doing to keep pace with these trends. How are they appealing to the women's market? Fair enough. Let's start with this, the Women on Wheels program. Now in its third year, Women on Wheels already has reached over 50,000 gals of every size, creed, color, and age. It was designed to uncomplicate the cars for women while teaching them simple repairs. And it's working. So is our constant attempt to improve the appearance of our dealerships, their color, cleanliness, and comfort, both up front and in the back shop. Our products are right on target, especially the compacts, which have creamed the women's market. We've added thick carpeting and crushed velours, plus special decorator interiors as in the spring specials. Our advertising has been featuring women more, not just as foils for the guys, but as independent free spirits. And there's a whole lot more to come in the very near future. Just you wait and see. We've learned a lot about women in recent years, and now it's your turn.
You'd be surprised how many salesmen turn women prospects off completely through insult, innuendo, or just not using their heads. They make the mistake of lumping all women into a single category. Dumb. They prospect and qualify males as individuals, but not females. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's absolutely no difference, male or female. Not much, anyway. If you prospect properly, you will find that women of the same economic level as men, the same educational level, the same social level, are exactly the same types of prospects. Sure, we use words which may be slightly different. Not all colors are fully accepted by both sexes. But if they want to look under the hood, you talk engines and transmissions. If they run their hands over the upholstery, you talk about interiors. Sex makes no difference whatsoever. What's important here is that you learn how the car is going to be used. If she's buying it independently, she will look for one to suit her specific purposes. I'm a widow, you know, and I spend a lot of time visiting my children. I always drive, but they live so far away, and trips take a lot out of me. Amazing what you can learn by listening. You might have been tempted to suggest an inexpensive compact to the lady, but what she needs is a full-size car with comfort and convenience options. She can afford it, too. Let me tell you something. It isn't the meek who are going to inherit the earth. It's the women. Inheritance laws today are all in their favor. Plus, they outlive men by at least seven years from birth. Don't be bashful about big tickets with an older woman. Chances are, she's got it in the bank. With this one, it's a little different. She's the typical suburban housewife. Or is she? I really think it's best to eliminate the word typical from our vocabulary when we're talking about women. I do enjoy our home, and it's great for the kids, but they can't get anywhere without being driven. Where would we be without carpools? Okay, maybe you're ahead of me, but the point is, you're not going to try and sell her a station wagon because she's a suburban housewife. No, you're going to sell her on the basis of her needs and wants same as if she were a male prospect. Incidentally, if she has kids in Little League Baseball or out for football, don't miss the opportunity to try to get her into a compact wagon. She could be very grateful. Forty percent of American wives are now employed outside the home, compared to only 24 percent in 1950. And the numbers are growing. Their needs are different. This would really be our second car, because my primary interest is economy. I want something that doesn't cost too much to buy or to keep up. My husband says I can pick what I want, but after all, I'm paying for it out of my own salary. Fine. She's a candidate for a compact because it suits her needs. Just give her credit for her intelligence and a sincere desire to buy. That's the secret of selling to women, same as anybody else. Generally speaking, it's true that men are still a little more sports car oriented while women are more impressed with functional details. Men seem to respond more to product features, while women really want to know about the benefits, but not always. A lot depends on age, status, economic and social conditions, even the environment. Daddy can afford to buy me a big car for graduation, but I think we should all do what we can to ease the energy crisis. Still, I want something super sharp to show off for all the other kids. See what I mean? Super sharp, but no strain on the gasoline supply. You'd be wrong if you went for a compact on this one. She wants a deluxe intermediate with a 318 and all the options with pizzazz. That'll show them. You know, it used to be said, pity the single woman, but no more. She may be single by choice or by accident. A divorcee or not the marrying kind, but whatever she is, she has no reluctance to express herself as an individual. She is self-supporting, and with the liberalization of credit, she can buy what she wants when she wants it. I do have a boyfriend, though I loathe to admit it. We often go places together, splitting the check, of course, but it's always in his car. I don't need a lot of room in mine, but it's got to say me. Everything about it has to shout to the world that it belongs to me and no one else. OK, here's your chance. Sell her the top-of-the-line compact and let her have a ball, making it as personal as she can. 
Join in the fun and help her express her identity. She might even get to like you as a person. You know, there are a lot of things we can do to stay in closer touch with the women's market. Try looking at your wife's or girlfriend's copy of Cosmopolitan magazine or McCall's. Find out what they're saying to each other and about us. Better yet, ask them. Make your own survey. Find out what they think is important about cars and how they prefer to be sold. Bet you a bundle your gal says she wants to be respected for what she is, an intelligent, educated person. When she's in a buying mood, she wants to be talked to like a customer, not a woman. Men, sex isn't everything. It's 